You are now listening to Trans Talks with JC Best and Dina Marie. Hi, I'm Dina Marie. <laughs> We're just talking about tra- tra- trans shit. I did not come to play with you, hoes. <laughs> I came to play, bitch. Most people who are trans have been through hell and high water. The hardest part about being a woman is figuring out what to wear. You know what that music, that sound means. It is 8 o'clock on Sunday night, and it's time for Trans Talk, baby. I'm your host, JC Best. And to my left, the beautiful, the remarkable, the stunning Miss Dina Marie. Hey, what's up, boo? How are you, baby? Good, how are you? I got to start uh, calling you more things than just beauty because you are multi-talented. <laughs> we we just had an incredible work session. We uh, did. You see, I can work. You can't. You worked it, boo. Like, Brittany, <laughs> to talk about, oh, man, I got to hold it up again to the camera. Can oh I get God. it right it there? Just on the on it. Why did you I'm going to do it again because I'm so excited about it. Yeah. Oh, yeah <laughs> To talk about our uh, our upcoming event at Caroline's next month, Wednesday, June twenty first. Yes. Uh, yeah, our live Gay event Pride Week, of Trans right? Talk. Benefit for the Alley Forney Center. So exciting! It's really big thing. This is we were just it's talking about how crazy this Isn't is. It stressful? You know, it is a little stressful. You know, a lot of podcasts they just do podcast shit. This has kind of become bigger. It's definitely bigger than me. I feel like it's almost become bigger than us. With it's this. really big. It's like happening fast. fast. Yeah. Like, and Caroline's is like, it's a pretty big thing. Guys, if you're watching or if you're going to be listening after, this is such a huge event for us. Once again, Wednesday night, June 21st, 7.30 p.m., Caroline's on Broadway in Times Square. Uh, it's a benefit for the Alley Forney Center. And we're going to have a ball, man. We're going to be doing, you know, we're going to have musical performances. We're going to have comedy. We're going to have some local activists uh, there. We're going to be talking about some real shit uh, and giving away some prizes and games. And it's just going to be a really good time. And uh, it goes to a good cause. So please, if you support the show, uh, support us by buying tickets, going right on the Caroline's website. Yeah. Uh, or our Facebook page, which is Trans Talk. It would mean really a lot to us. If, it would. It would mean a lot to us. And, sure. and it would mean a lot to the cause. It's and it would mean a, a lot to the cause. cause. Yeah. yeah. To, you know, Dina, when we started this, and listen, you better than me, okay? I'm an ignorant mother effer, as you know. I'm trying not to curse. Oh, well, you, you try. Uh, and but <laughs> we started this, you know, uh, humorously talking about um, a topic that's really – uncomfortable to a lot of people because they just ignorant and they don't know and it's morphed into you know something that's really big like we're actually helping people now we that's are. crazy and that's like really like a big thing and we wanted to do that and first yeah the alley forney center at first they wouldn't even like listen um lo- <laughs> we didn't want anything to do with us at first i guess because of our like is it my fault <laughs> well it's not mine <laughs> That's messed up. We had issues. Guys, this is... I'm a, just kidding. No, it's, she's right. We I had right. issues. <laughs> no charity wanted to, to mess with us, man. They didn't want to mess with us because, I guess, did they feel like maybe we were fetishizing trans people? Well, I don't think that that's the case. We have... I'm, I'm curious. A lot I've, of great guests on. We have had some incredible guests. We've done some really... Um, we've had some really amazing talks. And if you're out there, please understand this is not – no one's fetishizing anything. Um, we're really serious about this. We're really serious about the community and the movement. We use humor. That's just the bottom line. We talk shit on the show um, because, you know, I'm a comedian. Yeah, well, that's what you got to do. You manage a comedy club. I do. Broadway Comedy Club. Listen, we can we maybe you can exp- speak to this for people. People think, I guess, well, actually one uh, guest said it previously. The um, activist from Trans Women's Cl- uh, Color Collective she said that trans, uh, you know, community is no laughing matter. Can you speak to the difference between making fun of the trans community and talking about real issues 
through the lens of humor because I, I well, you know, maybe people. Are not I mean, there. I said it when she was on the show. Like, I feel that, like, and you even said it when she was on the show that if you want to be treated equally with the rest of the world, and comics are making fun of everything, if you say that you don't want them to talk about trans stuff, then you're not being equal. You're just like separating yourself i mean this is i i don't know any simpler way to do it but it's not you know listen guys and this is a thing is it maybe it's in the queer community as a whole i feel like it's just a very it's a lot of sensitivity um because they've been through so much you know um trans people especially the homicide rates are still up you know i don't want to talk about a bunch of negative stuff here but listen there's constant discrimination against trans people and it's not right it really isn't, and you know when you're dealing with stuff like that, maybe people, you know, they don't want to laugh. I guess, but there's got to be a way to do it. We're trying, we're trying our best. You we know, are. sometimes we fail. I take a lot of risks. You know what I mean? But uh, hopefully, the upside is to know that uh, we love everybody, we accept everyone, no matter what. And this podcast is really to show light and educate. And to bring, um, yeah, to bring, I guess, attention uh, to the trans community uh, in a positive way. So we're really psyched about this event. We're psyched about the Alley Forney Center very, jumping very on excited. board um, and partnering with us. And please support the show, guys. If, even if you can't come, uh, buy a couple promo tickets. Promo tickets has the promo code Jenner. Yes. Uh, <laughs> you love Caitlyn Jenner. <laughs> I'm not going to let that go. Hey, boo, listen, if you want to come on down, I love you. Okay? We love you. And JC wishes the show was called to trans talk with JC Best and Caitlyn. That's not true. Uh, although, Caitlyn, I'm, if, you offered, if you offered that, I would not turn it down, baby, because I'm sure I could probably educate you on some things because I've learned so much in the past six months. Uh, but, yeah, the promo code is Jenner if you want promo tickets. Uh, instead of full price, you look uh, freaking fantabulous. Well, thank you. You look just great. I mean, this is you're just very elegant uh, today. Uh, in fact, we have not done trans cam in such a long time, and I think today warrants it. Can we do a little trans cam? We can do whatever you want. Let's do a little trans cam. Uh, uh, go ahead and stand up, boo. Take that microphone and just tell us a little bit about your outfit. Joe, it's very important that we get her shoes, too, because this bitch got some bad heels on today. Why am I? Let's start at the top. Okay. Uh, well, I'm just wearing a dress from H&M and uh, this little leather jacket. H&M, the official clothing. And the shoes. The sponsor of Trans. They're really sexy, and Christy Miller gave them to me. I love Christy them. Miller, good friend of the show. Look at those heels. Can you, are you even going to have toes after you take these things off? Gosh. Yes, I'm fine. Um, the leather jacket, where's the coat from? Oh, I don't know. I've had this for a while. I don't even know where I got it. Okay, so you, you got the coat yeah. from someone's closet. Uh, <sighs> the <laughs> Mine. Can we a do a little spin, spin there? You, you just spin? look fantastic. No. <laughs> All right. And then, of course, the jewels on top. And that is trans cam here. You look great. Thanks, man. Um, are you excited about today's show? I am. Uh, we're having your my boyfriend, boyfriend James, on the show. <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> this is so huge. It is. From when we first started um, talking and talking, you know, even from a few months ago when we started the show, um, I can't say that. Well, I don't know. I guess you just kind of did a complete 180. I feel. Me? Um, yeah, maybe. I feel like since you met him, you've just been really happy. I wanted to take some credit for the success, but you've been even better since you met him. That's crazy. How you get even better than knowing me? That's just, un that's just <laughs> oh, unbelievable. Well, I mean, that would be about you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he makes you happy, though. He does. He makes me sick. Yeah. Um, and listen, we were going to have a couple of other guys on the show, and these are guys who... Uh, have varying different relationships, I guess, with trans people, and they're open about it. But I almost felt like that didn't feel right, because, you know, James loves you for you. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of a different situation, and I want to wait, and I want him to speak yeah, on you that. Yeah, we can talk to him when he's Yeah, him. but, it, but would, you, would you say that, 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 I mean, that's different than me just having guys on the show, which I had a couple conversations with these guys. They're extraordinary people. Um I'm going to have them on in the future. I want to have them on in the future. Babe, it is still taboo. I mean, maybe not to you, but it is still taboo for some reason. Why it is? I don't know. 
What do you think? I don't. I don't know why. It, I guess it is. Yeah. It is. You guess it is. No, it is. I know. For what reason? I, I don't know. I think that people should just like. What difference is it to any? What What does it matter to anybody who anybody? What difference does it make who you love, love, who you love? But yeah, apparently that's you know it's still kind of a taboo subject. So I do want to get people on who are open. Um, and comfortable and not afraid and willing to talk about the fact that they love regardless. Well, it's so, important, definitely. It is important. It is important. And listen, it's even important for ignoramuses like me. Uh, even though I'm ignorant in the way I talk about it, the truth is I do love and I have, you know, had sexual relations with a broad spectrum of genders. <laughs> You, so <laughs> every, you're like pansexual. Every, uh, right? What's that? <laughs> you're like pansexual. But I hate that. See, this is. The, I know I you hate like that. that. You term. don't like. You don't. What do you not like? You don't like gender. You don't like um like to put a label on. Yo, something. I'm telling you, I did. I swear to God, I identify with almost like, you know how they say like non-binary. Yeah, for yeah. gender, I the same thing for sexuality. I do, one of our news stories is about that. We, yeah, we're, in fact, we're gonna. That's good. That's a good transition. We're gonna talk about that. But I cannot stand that box. Pansexual means what? Is a person that is open to having sexual relations with everybody, or just you're in love with the person, not who they are or what they are. Okay, all right, fine. I guess you could say that. I could fall in love with anybody, but even still, I don't... Well, you just want to have sex with anybody. Oh, well, that's not true. Stop calling me a... I'm not a, <sighs> more than a puppy. Uh, well... A horny puppy. Uh, okay, we are... Uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's talk about a couple of these news stories since we talked about non-binary. Uh, to bring this up, this is really interesting. So we do a little news? We should. Uh, we want to start out with this, because this just happened here in, like, the past 24 hours. You know the show Transparent? Yes, I do. I, I do like, I like Transparent. It's a good show. Huge show on Amazon, uh, and it covers, you know, it's if you don't true, know, check it out. Story. Uh, it's, well, it, the writer and director actually came up with it because Jill man, Soloway, their father, Jill Soloway, their father came out of trance. Mm -hmm. So the show is a comedy, ta-da, comedy drama about a uh, family and how they deal with the fact that their father came out trans. And it's really funny. It's a little dark at times, um, but it's great. It's right up my alley, which is why I always say humor can be discussed with anything because we need humor to get through life because life is so crazy. Anyway, the writer and director, Transparent, uh, came out as trans themselves, okay? Um, and they came out specifically as non-binary, which means they don't use pronouns like him or her. They like to be referred to as they, uh, which we've had a guest, just Tom, just who was non-binary. An and yeah. I struggled. You did. You struggled. You kept calling them her. Right. And I, but remember, I started comedy here in the city, and I knew Jess when they were a she. Yes. Right? And so it was, is it difficult? This pro Listen, this is not easy with the non-binary thing. No, okay? I mean, I even, like, struggle with it. It is. It's a struggle. Bit. And, folks, remember, you know, non-binary just means that the person does not identify... They don't exist in a space where they identify as either male or female. They don't um, identify with the binary gender, binary genetic code that they were given at birth. Okay, that's all it means. That's what it means. Yeah, they, am, I, am I fucking you, that up, or did I get it right? <laughs> no, I don't think you're gonna get it right. Okay. But we're probably gonna get emails that you're not. Uh, right. Okay, we're probably gonna get, and that's fine. We like emails. We like emails. <laughs> Where do we get emails? If you want to <laughs> correct, you can me. email us at transtalkradio at gmail dot com. If you want to correct one of us, if you want to correct radio. JC. Uh, anyway, the reason that this was. <laughs> The reason why this was a story is because it came out in The Guardian. The Guardian's uh, um, uh, Hayley Freeman, I guess, interviewed um, interviewed Jill Holloway and – Soloway. Soloway, I'm sorry. And Jill was basically st you know, stating – or how can I – let me go ahead and make sure I've got this right. Uh, okay, here we go. This is what the uh, Guardian author wrote. Hearing Soloway, whose work is so profoundly feminist, suggest that the best way to be treated as a human is to not be a woman is so befuddling that I am almost 
speechless because Jill Holloway in the interview said, I, I, I'm sorry, Soloway, excuse me. I notice when people see me as a non-binary, I get treated more as a human being. So this kind of caused a little bit of a stir, at least with the author, and then people online are now chiming in about it. The fact that Jill is basically saying, I don't want to be looked on as a woman anymore. I want to be looked on as non-binary, and therefore the author is saying, well, basically, are you rejecting you know, the feminist values that you so, you know, you so, so fought for and like, yeah, you so far, for. you demonstrate, you know, on the show and, and, and everything like that. That's a really interesting point. I wanted to talk about that. What, what, what do you, what do you think? I mean, it's, it's I mean, yeah, it's, you know, if that's what you fought for is the whole like feminism stuff. And now you're saying that you're not, that you you're don't not, want to be, yeah. I mean, it, listen, this is a tough situation. Gina, because non-binary, what we can't look down on them, especially if you're in the queer community, you can't say, oh, non-binary doesn't make any sense. You know, we can't, um, right. you know, now we're going to discriminate against non-binary people. But this is, the, I mean, this really, you know, with the trans thing, it really is a huge umbrella. It's very big and it just gets bigger. Yeah, it's not just, you know, a lot of people, I mean, I guess yeah. most people. It was just like trans. Man and Man female, and trans women, and now there's like so many. There's non-binary. There's gender queer. There's two spirit, um, and most people identify with either man or women, um, but in this case they don't. And so you know, I mean, there was we were looking at. I'm looking at the article and reading it, and there was a time when they were giving, um, I guess, Jill makeup, and they lashed out and were like, "I don't want to look like a female." Like it was a huge thing that the author captivated, you know, captured in the in the Guardian article. Like they do not want to be associated with femaleness of any kind. Yeah. I'm respecting them, you know, but it, am I messed up for saying um, we should respect any, you know, everybody no matter what? I mean, what no, do you? No, I mean you have to respect people. Like I always, I mean, I if I want people to respect me, I have to give people the same kind of respect. Right. I think. And do you think, and you know, this was brought up before, um, uh, do you believe that people, that there are, I don't want to say levels, but do you believe that there are people who look down on people even within the trans community? Like maybe non-binary is not looked at as, as serious or, I don't know, significant? Well, like as I was telling you before, I think people are just coming around and like grasping like trans and stuff so right. when you give them other stuff to grasp and where you're not even identifying with either gender i think that that's confusing for them right right what do you think uh what, God, what do, i don't even know how do you what do you think what should you do i don't even know i mean well i think obviously like i would say like i said that i said what I tell people, like, you just have to live your life and be you because at the end of the day, you're not going to be happy. So that's all. That you can Listen, do. I'm going to call you whatever you want. Whatever you want to be called, I'm calling you. You want to be called Unless man. Unless you keep women. messing up. <laughs> I might get it wrong. You do might, that a lot. I might mess up. But okay, but this is also something for the trans community. If people especially non-binary i think you they're also you have to give a latency period if people make a mistake you know did you see what happened um a couple weeks ago when we did when we interviewed hennessy and i messed up at the end of the show and i called him a her and hennessy was so dope he didn't make a big deal out of it. It wasn't, a, you know, he was like, listen, people need to be more understanding. There's going to be mistakes. There's going to be mixed up, of course, and you have to be understanding. I was loving that. I really appreciated it, too. So, listen, even from the queer community, you're going to have to be more understanding. This is a lot. Even for trans people, it's a lot to learn. It's new. It's different. You know, we all kind of got to be loving and accepting and patient with one another. Yes. Uh, but yeah, okay, well, Jill, congratulations on your coming out, and we wish you the best. You're killing it with Transparent, Golden Globes, and Emmys, and all that. Yeah, they win a lot of awards. They win a lot of It's a great show. Uh, you have a couple of articles you wanted to go over? Yeah, Janet Mock. You know Janet Mock. I She's love me author. some Janet Mock. Yo, listen, if y'all get a chance, I'm telling I don't care where you from, hood niggas, listen, look up Janet Mock. 
She's really pretty. Ooh, she a bad bit. Mm. Oh my goodness. Janet Mock is very, very, very nice, beautiful, and has a great history. Look her up. She's an, an actress and an author. Uh, trans. Uh, yeah, actress her and second author. book is coming out. It's called Surpassing Cer Certainty. It's called it's called Speaking to the Mic. Surpassing right? Certainty. Okay. It's coming out in June. Right. And uh, it is about her 20s and like coming around with being trans and stuff. But she is saying that she struggles with being called a trans advocate because people try to like come to her like with stuff, but she wants people to realize that she didn't always have it like together. I think people think that she has it together and she's this accomplished author and she's all of this. So, but she, and she wants people about to know stripping. like she, she was a sex worker and mm -hmm. like she was a stripper and she did all of this stuff and she just feels like it puts like a lot of like pressure on her. I How think. about that? How about you trying to live your life and people want you to speak out and be an advocate? That's really difficult. Yeah. That is really difficult. Um, actually, Hennessy kind of said that some, she said, uh, Hennessy, he said something like that. She gets invited to college campuses and, uh, as well. and stuff like that to like lecture on transness or whatever. But you know, when, when, young people get there, their questions are about just life. And she was surprised by that. And she realized that people show up for her talks and, you know. Listen, just because you are trans doesn't automatically mean you ready to be, you know, head trans person in charge. Like, you, you can't right. automatically. Right, everybody's just trying to live. live your life and come to, like, grips with stuff. Yeah. And if people want you to be a role model, I would assume that it's hard when you're still just trying to live your life. You automatically want to be a role model. I'm t it's really t And listen, being a role model is tough. I used to be a preacher, and I can tell you, people are looking at you all the time. What kind of car you drive? What do you wear? What's your wife look like? You know, just the whole king caboodle. Being a role model ain't easy, boo. It's not. Even you for this show, I'm sure probably people look at you as... I guarantee you there are people who look at you as a person, an expert on everything trans. Well, I guarantee I'm you. not an expert at all. I used to look at you like that when uh, we first started. I was like, well, I have questions and, and I want you to know everything. I'll always answer people's questions, but I'm not, certainly not the utmost authority on the, this. An authority, right. We're just doing our best. And this is what I really love about this show is we just down to earth, regular mother efforts. We regular. You can come up to us on the street. You can talk to us. We are regular people. We're trying to figure this out. And that's why I say there's got to be room for error and mistakes. Um, Janet Mock, with that article that you're referring to, uh, that was in the New York Times, I believe, right? Yes, New York Times Magazine. She also referred to the fact that at 21, she was stripping. And this is after she came out as trans, Okay. Um, she was stripping and she also had, first she was doing, I think she was doing she sex was work doing first sex or stripping? Work. No, she was doing sex work first. And then I think that it's, wait, what does it say? This is the thing that we've got to It said that I think discuss. after she had, it comes up a lot, Dina. It comes up a lot. The yeah, I mean, it happens work. a lot because I think a lot of trans girls have problems getting jobs or whatever. So a lot of them turn to sex work because they are uh, fantasized about and guys are, I guess, willing to pay. To okay, and this them. is okay. And I'm glad I'm on the same page. So this is what I was talking about this with a friend last week. And they uh, they asked the question, you know, why are so many um, trans people and, and I think a lot of them going back page and stuff. sex work and stuff and this is basically trans people have been known to be discriminated against and uh, basically have resorted to going to I guess back page and different maybe I don't know if Craigslist whatever but different resources to do sex labor because it's a ways and means to an end I mean this to me, you know, if I'm hearing this at, at the very least six months ago, I'm, this is sad to me, right? But apparently there's a movement um, where sex work, you know, where people are trying to legalize, I guess, sex work. Yeah, I, yeah. Well, I, I don't, uh, what, what, we had what, a guest on that was talking about what, that. I mean, what are your thoughts? You know, like, do you, um, I don't know. Pro <laughs>
<laughs> I talk about myself having sex for money, but that's only because I'm good at it. I really don't charge. Uh, y'all can Are get you? this D for free. Are you? <laughs> y'all can get this for free. Uh, I don't know, do you know how I feel about it. I feel like it's a it's a tough industry to be in. You know, sex sex work. I guess they want it regulated. I, I don't know. I guess. It is regulated in Nevada, um, I believe, in, in the I state of Nevada. It, yeah. Um, or I at think least, it's not all of Nevada. And it's I not even it's, all of Nevada. It's not in Vegas. I it's think not it's Vegas. Outside. It's like Reno or not Reno, but in certain parts of uh, Nevada, it's regulated. We know that because Lamar Odom was doing his thing uh, last the bunny year. Ranch. <laughs> <laughs> At the Bunny Ranch. <laughs> Go ahead, Lamar, and get you, you party, uh, party on, Lamar. Anyway, I don't know. I guess maybe it's better that the sex industry be regulated. Maybe that's the argument for it. But I don't know. I just feel like... I feel like that's a tough way to go. I mean, would would do you think trans people would still be involved in sex work if there wasn't so much discrimination? I don't know. I can't speak for them. Do, I mean, it's oh, is it just me, or it just seems like every single time we have a wet uh, an episode, trans or um, uh, sex work, the topic of sex work does come up. Yeah, I mean, it does because yeah, a lot of them are have to do that. You know, you have to make money and. Know, if they can't find a job, I guess that. That's a question. What them. would you do if you could not find a job? You put your resume out. <laughs> you're doing everything you can to find a job. Would you sell that pussy? I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I mean, you know, I don't know. Would, would you? Would you? <laughs> Listen, I've done a things for free that I absolutely could have charged for. So I'm going to say I would do what I have to do. <laughs> I need a job right now, actually. Uh, who knows? Maybe I'm going Craigslist. I really shouldn't even joke about it like that. But the truth is, you know, there is a movement to get sex work legalized. And, you know, I, I don't know. She did it. It seems like a lot of trans people have done it. I personally wish that there wasn't a discrimination factor and you weren't discriminating against people who are human beings who are qualified for the job. But we're not there yet. Yeah. You know, so, you know, it is what it is. Well, listen, we love Janet Mock. You know, um, she's doing a fa fa fantastic Definitely. job. Yeah. Uh, great. OK, well, what's the uh, what's the next news story? Uh, YouTube blogger and star he does a lot of um youtube videos about i guess being trans or whatever his awesome. name is jamie rain okay great and he made this ode to trans people like just saying like the positive things about being trans and he said like five years ago or even like two or three years ago like it probably he didn't think that he would have ever been able to come up with like positives Wow. about it but especially now like after being on testosterone and having top surgery like um he feels like a lot better about it and has wow. like a lot of positives to say well seven that's he amazing so he seven. made a video and he's probably got a, a bunch of followers so this is why this was a news article yeah. in the first place he made it uh you know just a, a video about positive things about being trans what are some of the things he said uh, the first thing was his girlfriend he says that uh when he first met her they were 16 and it was before he actually started to physically transition and she has like a very um uh, strict family and she wasn't really allowed to even have friends that were boys like she was only allowed to have female friends so the fact that he was a she and hadn't transitioned it made it easy for him wow to be around her nice and like get closer and become friends and then you know so the family really w wasn't accepting as a les the lesbian relationship i guess or the relationship before no the, the, the family didn't want his the family didn't want his girlfriend to be around any, she wasn't allowed to be around men. She was only allowed to be friends with wow. women. So it actually helped that. They were friends. That's funny. So you're a female. They were friends before she transitioned. She transitioned yeah. What kind of family don't want your girl to be around? I, oh, I well, guess. they're religious, oh. I guess. Golly, yeah, religious people. Fucking. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Can I, yeah, yeah, but no, but she's right. They don't want you <laughs> Religious JC. people do not like fucking of any kind outside the confines of the marriage relationship. But let me tell y'all, it's a lot of religious people fucking <laughs> doing shit that they're not supposed to be doing. So that's just really crazy. All right, well, whatever. Go ahead, Dana. Uh, he says that he's a better person because they've uh, learned and they've seen life from a different perspective, obviously, I guess, 
being able to be two genders, so right. I guess they feel like they've learned more. Okay. They also say that they're able to see the best in people. I guess they also, they say that they can also see the worst in people, but they choose to see the best in people, especially people that have stuck by them through their transition and whatever. Wow, awesome. Making new friends and doing fun things, because I guess being this on YouTube and doing these videos, I get he he's met like a lot of cool like trans people. And wow, great! Stuff like that, new um, people, fantastic friends. He, he says that puberty was great the second time around. Hilarious. The first time around, it was painful, and I guess the second time around, which I guess I can relate to because you know I get excited by stuff. Puberty twice. <laughs> That's cute. <laughs> and then um, you know positive influences on life without being held back like they're i guess they're able to be free to like be themselves and right they don't have to hold back because now they were able to be true to themselves i'm gonna tell you that's probably one of the biggest ones the the positive life and being true to yourself it is such a just it's super it's, important oh it, i always tell people uh, you have to be true to yourself and if you're not true to yourself then what really are you doing Folks, I don't care what you are, male, female, trans, it don't even matter. Be true to yourself. It's such a sigh of relief. You can breathe if you can just be real for a second. It's so beautiful. Um, yeah, that's that's great. And I love stories like that because we always talk about real shit on this show. And sometimes it can be a little bit negative and a little bit down. But, yeah, we got to talk about the positives every once in a while. Yes. So that's fantastic. And I've also – I have grown – to um to love people of all different types of backgrounds and be more understanding, even though my background is is as close as it is. So I can concur with a couple of those things on that list. Uh, okay, that's great. Well, that's good. Uh, good news segment. I'm ready for the guest. Me uh, too. Uh, I guess I met this guy a few months ago uh, at the club, Broadway Comedy Club. Great personality, friendly, fun. Uh, you've known him for longer than me. You want Yes, <laughs> he's my boyfriend. <laughs> this is your boy, your my main squeeze. James. Uh, yeah, uh, everybody go ahead and uh, give it up for our special guest, Dina's boyfriend, James, is in the building. Woo! James, come on the show. We got a couple people in the audience. They clapping. Thank you. Appreciate that. What's up, James? What up? Oh, man, good His to see you, out. brother. Good to see. Is his mic on? Oh, James, man. It's bright up here, man. Good to have you, dude. It is a little bright. <laughs> it's hard being a performer. Hey, listen, it's hard being a performer. I can tell you, sometimes you can't even see into the, you know, into the crowd. And, uh, man, listen, this has been a long time coming. We've been talking about this for weeks, getting you on, and you're cool with it. You have, you, you were ready to go from, from when we first mentioned it, right? Basically. Basically, yeah. <laughs> pretty much. How uh, how uh, how are you guys doing? You guys touching each other? You already look happy. I was so sick to see y'all. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna be honest. I was a little jelly, Shut bro. Cause up. Dina was my piece for so long. Oh you know, my I had, god, was I that, never was yours. She wasn't my piece, <laughs> James. I'm sorry, but I just it was. I was the apple of her affection, and now she don't even look at me no more. I could be walking in the street, she'd be like, I don't That's know. That's because she got an orchid fucker. now. She do. She got a, <laughs> I guess. She got a real one. Uh, you have changed her life, I can tell you, because she's great. I mean, positive energy. Not that you, you weren't great before, but, I mean, even extra. You're even better. Uh, how long have you guys been dating now? Uh, we've, like, what, December 24th? What, December 23rd or 24th? December. Like December 23rd? Yeah. Okay. Right ha before Christmas. Right before Christmas. He okay. was my Christmas present. He was your Christmas present <laughs> from Jesus. Look at that. <laughs> Jesus likes trans people. Look at that. He just gave him a present. Look at that. Uh, <laughs> Jesus. How did y'all meet? We met on OK <laughs> You. <laughs> Okay, Cupid. Okay, Cupid. Why are you? Why are you scared? To I'm say not. Okay, Cupid. We met. I tell that to everybody. Yeah. Oh, it was like, good because he. he well, we would have never met otherwise. No. So you, wait, wait, <laughs> you strictly date on like online because people are like real kind of. They don't want to talk about how they no, meet people I mean, online you know, and stuff. No, I get it. Well, I get I it. Mean, he. Yeah. Well, not ahead. anymore, but. Well, yeah. you're saying you're not online anymore. No, 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 I don't have a problem with online dating. I, I'll date anybody. I'll meet anybody anywhere, you know. I just feel like people, like, get real, like, oh, you know, like, I, I don't, what are you people supposed to say? They met in a bar? That was the 80s. People don't meet in bars anymore. People meet online. Well, 
Uh, when I met him, I was about to get off of there because I was just like sick of it because guys would just hit me up and it would be like fantasized or whatever. And I just don't want to be a fantasy. And like they would say that it wasn't about a fantasy and oh, they want to date. But then two seconds later, they want to try to send you their dick picture or whatever. But he was different. Like every day, like we would talk and like I, I guess I had told him about the show or whatever. Right. And he started watching it, and then, like, every day, like, he would message me, and, like, we would just have, like, I would look forward to, like, the conversations or whatever. And then we met, and we talked, and, like, we really, like, hit it off. I'm going to say that's a beautiful thing uh, to both of y'all. Um, if I'm online, I want y'all to be clear. If I'm online, I'm sending you my dick in the first three or four <laughs> messages. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm proud of it. It's something I'm proud of. It. You know, it's damn near an accomplishment. I used to be on OK Cupid 2 way back in the day, you know, after I got uh, separated from my wife, and I was still sending my dick pic out. So y'all could be, you know, that's beautiful. I mean, that's really nice, you know. But yeah, okay. I see some people send their dick pic out. Uh, all right, that's cool, James. What do you do, man? Um, it's a oh, long man, I story. Guess we can't be can we talk about that? I, yeah, I mean, I, I, I do. I do uh, uh, something called development operations. I'm a software engineer and okay. assistant admin put together. Software engineer, so you smart brother. He's super smart. Sometimes he he's super it to me, and I don't fucking. Are. I couldn't even get it. I was like, well, that sounds like a lot, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Would you explain it to her? Uh, yeah, I, I bring that up because it's very important to clarify you're not a performer like we deal in the artist community you're not a comedian you're not a performer uh of any kind you're just a regular dude well i mean in, in the past i have uh done a lot of performing really what yeah. have you performed well i used to sing all the time so i was in different types of uh ensembles, small acapella groups uh, uh, for like eight years of my life or more wow. so uh I wrote songs a lot. In the awesome. Past. Uh, from what now, actually, now that I bring that up, I actually, uh, you play the piano as well. Yeah. From what I understand, that's that's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, you actually, sound, your voice sounds like you could either be on radio or that you could sing. I will say that. <laughs> you sound like you could be an R&B singer. I know how to use a microphone. You know how to use a microphone. <laughs> do you ever sing to Dina at night? Is that is that something you do? You sing? Uh, I, don't, I haven't done it like that since I was in high school. Okay. So yeah, was, uh, <laughs> you could call a girl up and say. <laughs> I'm two seconds from asking you to drop a tune, James. I'm not even gonna lie. No. You're not gonna do it. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, that's really cool. Okay, so you are so you're a performer in that sense. You play a little piano. That's cool. Um, you you're cool with the fact that Dina manages a comedy career. Like, what would you say that that uh, has affected the relationship in a, in a different way, dating an artist, or have you ever dated an artist before? Yeah, um, the comedy club. Well, the hours are strange. Uh, yeah, that's that's. Uh, yeah, the, the hours. I think so be, too. Right. Yeah, she comes uh, home around two, two and three in the morning, and sometimes I can't even roll over. I'm like, Aah. right. <laughs> this is the hey. Sometimes I come home and he's like asleep, and I'm, I can't even wake him, so I just go to the bed. To <laughs> it is hard to date an artist. People don't even respect it. People say comedians shouldn't even really date uh, unless you're married already. I mean, it's really that that because you know it takes up a lot of your time. And yeah, you can, she uh, Dina manages the club. She's coming home at two, three in the morning. Um, it, so it affects your your life in that way. But what about just comedy in general? What's your relationship to comedy personally? You like to laugh. You. Who doesn't that. like to laugh? He I don't know. I wouldn't want to be around somebody that uh, that doesn't like to laugh. Right. He has a really good sense of humor. Yeah. He's twisted. He makes me laugh. A You're lot. a little dark. I, we've kicked it a little bit times. <laughs> we've kicked it a couple times. You say some fucked up shit. I have to, I, sometimes I'm like, wait, hey. I get surprised sometimes by the <laughs> stuff like, hey, he says thanks. myself. <laughs> Come on, dude. You can't say that. Yeah. Uh, no. Okay. That's yeah. That that that's really good. I think that's important. I think um, it, you know, that's something I worry about too. Is that you kind of meet somebody who's not in the comedy realm, and it really is anything goes. Dina, uh, is you talked about it. You're fine with jokes about any. You work at a comedy club. You hear everything yeah, all I mean, the time. Yeah. I mean, you know, I feel that nothing should really be off limits. If people are trying to make people laugh. Yeah. Right. I mean, yeah. 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 And you basically you're on the same page. You feel the same way. Yeah, man. Yeah. Who uh, who do you anybody that you know in terms of comedy that you like? Comedians. Uh, 
You say some pretty funny shit, man. Thank I got, you, I got man. to say. Thank you. I, I I'll have take to that. say, you, uh, you, 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 you say some pretty funny shit. Appreciate that, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, I wanted to ask you a question. Yeah. You Why can. don't people use the word coon anymore? We were talking about that the other day. <laughs> like, like, this coon is such. A, it's, it's, a, it's still Maybe. wrong. Coon but. is actually making a comeback. <laughs> Coonan is oh making a comeback. God. People don't know this. Yeah, you old Coon. That's some pretty good. Thing listen, Coon is making a comeback ever since uh, Omarosa and uh, and Ben Carson have been put on the president's roster. Coon, uh, Sambo, Autumn Terms is making a comeback. Oh no, that's terrible. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. That's like an old school term. I call somebody a Coon too if they probably. <laughs> <laughs> they deserve it. I don't care. So wait a minute, hold up. You and Dina were uh were talking about that too. That's funny. Yeah, we little, were talking about that. No interracial. Uh see see this is what people don't know. When you interracial, we, we talk about it all. You know, I have dated a number of people who were not black from black backgrounds, and the discussions are just fun to me. Do you have is this you know, since we say nothing is off limits, is this your first white uh girl that you dated? No. No, this is not so this is nothing, but this is old hat. You, if you will, it ain't an old hat, that's for sure. It's brand <laughs> it's, new, baby. It's brand new. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm still, I'm still stretching this cap out. <laughs> I'm sure you are. Jay said this is brand new. Hilarious. Uh, I'm not his fight, first white girl. I'm his first trans girl. Okay, well, okay. So before we get to the trans, Dina, you know Dina likes black. Like she's she's particular. I hate to say not this. me. I no. Dina, yes, it, no, that's not true. Dina, you I'm are joking, particular towards. Casey, are we not? Oh coming? my goodness, she is particular towards the dark me. I don't know what it is. What? It's true. Uh, James, what do you think about that? Am I speaking off the cuff? We, you know, we no, talk man. shit. Hey, I understand shit. <laughs> people who date interracially sometimes like a little something different i don't know what it is. i personally say if you're going to date interracially you should say all the foul shit uh that you're not allowed to say you know in regular life you should be able to say it so i really don't want to ask but do y'all have like any you know cute slave names that you uh you know that you bring up no not really <laughs> Nah. <laughs> we 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 throw the coon word around. You but. throw the coon word around, <laughs> baby. <laughs> He's being super real, Dina. Don't stop him. <laughs> but you know, it's a funny word. It is a funny word. <laughs> coon is a funny word. Um. Okay. So on the topic. So yeah. So this is your. This is uh, the first trans girl that you dated. Yeah. What? Uh. All right. So let's start with that. So, uh, because we were talking about pansexual earlier. Um, do you consider yourself a pansexual? Well, now I is the the relationship with Dana has changed me in that regard too, because it. Uh, um, what does gender mean? Because right. when when uh, uh, I met Dana, my body responded just like she was a woman. Right. And it still does. So right. what is it that that really did flip me out for a couple of weeks? But I got wow. Uh, up until this point, you had dated all women. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And you know, what do you? Okay, so let's just put it out there. What do you? What would you say to somebody saying, "Oh, you dated trans women. You're gay." Well, I I wouldn't give a fuck. Uh, but right. if they said, I, it depends on how I felt, <laughs> what I might say back to them. Quite. Do you honestly. even get that whole? Gay, do you even get that? <laughs> do you even get that mindset? That you know gay. what I'm saying? Like it, it's so far beyond me that people don't. It's like people just, they can't make the flip. What do you mean? Uh, just in terms of people associating trans people with, for example, trans women with a male or a trans man with a female. Well, of I... A female. That's very complicated. I don't know if I have an answer for it, but I, I don't have an answer for it. Uh, I, I think that it may be more common than... We know because if a trans person really is passing, you not you might not know when you see them walking down the street. You you don't know what uh, you may not really know. Interesting. Um, that's what one of my friends uh, told me. Right. Uh, about me and Dana. Right. Uh, so some people wouldn't even know. In fact, we were we were on a train. Some 
Yeah, this, this guy, I was like, I was like worried because he was like, uh, some like guy came on and he was like screaming stuff. And then he starts talking to him and then I was like, oh God. And then he's Wait, like, be more you. specific. You were, were, you were on a train and what was happening now? Well, this guy? guy just started getting loud and like saying stuff. And I thought he was going to say something like derogatory about me, but then he was talking to him and then like he, the guy just told me like, I, I thought, I didn't know which, it, it was just some guy being strange and talking too much on uh, and and, and he then he basically to, just uh, called me beautiful and yeah. oh, he, and he left it he said you, he said you he gave a comment he says you're beautiful he looked at me and said you're a lucky guy something like that and got off the train right and but you also bring up a good point if you're walking down the street and that person is passing so to speak we use that term passing, passing. yeah, yeah passing uh word. yeah how would they how would, how would they know? know how would you know and secondly uh and we say this all the time look at dina you gonna say that Dean is a man? Like, are you like? Really? Yeah, that 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 is a. There is no way. <laughs> there is no way. Dina is very feminine. Come on. Yes. You know. Always. We were talking about this earlier. <laughs> we were talking about this earlier. James is funny. We were talking about he this earlier. Funny. Now within the trans community, it seems like there's now there's different even aspects of it where people are not trying to pass. You know, uh, where people are, there's just subsets within groups. But in this type of situation, where you're talking about a trans woman, it's almost disrespectful, I would say at this point, to, be, to refer to them as a man or to refer to them as a it, it, It's disrespectful, yes, it, very extremely disrespectful. But the person who says that, they may not have the benefit of knowing someone who's transgender or maybe even knowing someone who's gay. Oh, they could be just completely bigoted and would never accept them in the first place. Right. Um, it, it, it seems like a very complicated question but, without a simple answer. I, I'm loving where you're going. Bigoted aside, let's because we deal with bigoted aside. Just maybe they're ignorant or, or uh, they don't know. I think that changes everything. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I cannot tell you how much I've changed, bro, even in the, the, the last year just by knowing Dina and just by having a relationship with her. You have preconceived notions when you don't know. Right. Sit down and reason with somebody. Man, a lot of people different. are fearful. And anyway, most people are just afraid of every damn thing. Before you met Dina, what was your thoughts on uh, trans people? I, I, I didn't have any. I don't think. It never came, it never came across your mind? Well, I've seen trans porn, but that's about it. <laughs> well, that's kind of what I'm asking about. I mean, were you, were you, did you, would you say you were interested in trans people before you met Dina from a sexual perspective or a relationship perspective? Not really. Right. Uh, I, 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 I had many friends over the years who were transgender, uh, kind of acquaintances, and I get to, I got to hear them talk about right. their experiences, and that was, I think that was helpful. Wow. So you had friends, yeah, so you had friends that are trans. So I feel yeah. like you were, from the gate, you were, I don't want to say cheating, but you were, you were open-minded even beforehand. I, I'm open-minded anyway, yeah. Uh, your family, what, uh, what about your family? Is your family as open-minded as you? Uh, my father's very religious, and if, it, it, that just wouldn't really work. Your father is very religious, you're saying he can't know. If, I wouldn't take that chance. Wow. Because my mother knows, my brother knows, but if my father knew, yeah, it's... Let, let's yeah. delve into that. Um, you, how did you have that conversation? Who did you speak to? Who was the first member of your family that you spoke to? Mom. My mother. You talked to your mom? Yeah. How uh, soon after were you dating Dina did you, did you talk to your mom? I don't know, three months. Three months is pretty good. We don't bring any old person around mom dukes okay three months is actually i've waited nine ten months before i show my mother some of these bitches uh my mama don't to, even uh, want to know about i'm going to just be honest with you <laughs> some of them don't get a chance to meet mom dukes okay you don't bring every side piece around mom you know what i'm saying so three months is actually pretty good what was the conversation like oh i told dana what did i tell you dana i don't remember <laughs> you told me after you did it, and you said that. Uh, well, she was at first. She didn't. Uh, she didn't know what it meant first. Tra she, what trans man? And then when he explained it to her, she was like upset. But then, like, didn't she call you like the yeah, next? Yeah, the next. Day or whatever? She was upset, and then the next day she called and uh, apologized, and she's been okay with it. <clears throat> she, she was upset. What did she say? 
Ew, I wouldn't want to repeat it, but right. uh, 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 my mom's got a foul mouth <laughs> anyway. Right. So I mean, she 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 just said some foul things about me and Will. Right. Uh, but uh, uh, it wasn't too. It wasn't far out of bounds. Uh, but it wasn't repeatable. Do you think it's like an older thing, I feel? Oh, yeah, they're old. They 60, late 60s, Southern black folks. James, what do you think? All right, what do we... See, I'm, I'm very similar to you, and I want to delve into this because you said your father can't know, so I want to explore that a little bit more. My parents are also traditional. I come from a very conservative religious background. They're not really about it for all it is. I mean, that's the truth. Like, I'm not, what, I'm going to stop loving my mother and my father because they're not, you know, about it for, the, for the, some, maybe some of the relationships or friendships or lifestyle choices that I've made. What do you do? Old people don't, they're they not down for that. Yeah, they're old. They old. I go back and forth with this because some people might, might try to say you got to force your parents to accept your life that you live in. Other people would say, my, like you said, my father can't know. I mean, I don't know. What, what, well, my father doesn't know a lot of things about me. We're not, I'm not particularly close to my dad. So there's a lot of stuff he just doesn't know about me. Are you a fan of if your parents are not going to accept it, you don't force it down their throat? Or you say, listen, mom, accept, you know, mom and dad, accept. Well, how could I force it down their throats? I'm my own man. They ain't got to come around me. Right. I don't need anything from them. Right, right, right. They take right. it or leave it. Yeah. But if I told my father, it would cause disruption in the family. And it's my just mother, not yeah, working. yeah. I know my mother would have to deal with it. And, uh, yeah. That is amazing that your, uh, that your mother came around like that. That's a beautiful thing. Mom is always going to love you, dog. That's unconditional love. You said you told your brothers as well? Brother, yeah. Brother. Brother. And how did that go? He, he was, I mean, he was, he said, I think he might have did a double take, but after that, it was over. Right. Yeah. Um, I dig your energy, man. It's real calm and cool. It, it's kind of like even when you say I you're like, that. yeah, it's just like it, I'm my own man. You got to come around me. Bro, I'm telling you, <laughs> I love shit like that. Again, this is not, you don't got to be trans. But whatever you are, black, white, trans, gay, straight, that needs to be your energy. If a motherfucker don't fuck with you, guess what? They don't fuck with you. Keep it moving. You know, Bye. but you, we don't got time for you, dog. <laughs> I don't have time for people giving me negative energy. I love that, man. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I want to bring up another thing since we're on the topic. You black. You're kidding. Most of the time. Any, it, 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 it. <laughs> Sur surprise, surprise. I had no idea. <laughs> surprise, surprise. We've talked about this a lot on the show with the, the black community being a little bit, um, you know, just kind of not really feeling a lot of things in the queer community. Let's go ahead and just specifically say the trans. Let's say the trans. You kind of like an oddball in, in that situation. How, what do you feel racially? What do you feel racially, you know? Uh, well, I mean, personally, I'm an oddball anyway. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, I, I, I march to the beat of my own drum. Do and I make it beat. Do you, <laughs> he does make it beat, don't you worry. That's hilarious. Do you, I mean, am I speaking out of, do you find that the black community kind of has their back up against the wall to, to you know, to queer community issues and stuff like that? I, I can't speak. Uh, I, I can tell what I can say about the black community is that the black community, unfortunately, is too conservative a lot of the times. Right. Um, surprisingly conservative a lot of the times. That's what I felt uh, from the black community is that this is a lot of conservative thoughts. Right. Um, about a lot of things. Right. Not, 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 not too much has changed. Why do you think, th why do you think that is? Why do you think that there's, um, uh, I don't know. I don't want to say it's not really an aversion. It's just kind of like, uh, you look on with maybe timidity, you know, or maybe they just, maybe we're just waiting to see. To it ain't easy being black. It ain't. <laughs> it, it ain't. It ain't easy. It ain't. And listen, I'm going to say something. Um, uh, Dave Chappelle had a joke uh, about Caitlyn Jenner being accepted in the media. Yeah. And he said he was happy for, but on the one, but on the other hand, it was like, damn, black people been fighting for how many hundreds of years to get their due, 
and she just came out. <laughs> And already everybody's loving Caitlyn, and he and he said it, and I, and I had well, to. Well, I mean, I, well, let's be real, not everybody's loving Caitlyn. Not everyone loves Caitlyn. <laughs> Caitlyn, I still fuck I with you. Do not Come love on the Caitlin. show, we want to talk to you and understand you. But uh, yeah, I support Caitlyn. I do not love Caitlyn at all. But but, but she to, says a lot of dumb shit. She does say some dumb shit. But to his point, maybe that's a little bit of it. Um, black people have been fighting, and we still treat it like shit even to this day in many cases. It's pretty tricky. You know, we can't even get a, a, on tape. On tape, you watch a, a cop kill somebody in cold blood, and we don't even know if they're going to get convicted. They never do. <laughs> usually don't. Like, really don't? They rarely do. It's awful. So maybe that's what it is. Maybe maybe uh, we feel like, listen, I can't be hopping on everybody else's civil rights bandwagon if we, maybe my own shit is not being heard. I don't know. I'm just trying to put things together. But there's, a, there's also a lot of diverse thought in the black community. Of, uh, um, I, I'm certainly not the one to talk about race relations. But Let's talk about a it. Lot of time, not an authority, <laughs> but we can kick it. A lot of times, maybe uh, people who, uh, black folks who think a lot different, end up leaving, you know, uh, leaving that small community where they may be able to have an impact on thought right. too. That's, that's, that could be part of it as well. Right, right. Um, I find that uh, when people open their minds and actually reach across the table and sit down with somebody who's different from you, that's when real change starts to happen. There, there's, I think it's very rare for two people who dislike each other to sit down with each other and still dislike each other afterwards. Right. Now, you probably have to be a monster right. uh, if you can't look into <laughs> somebody's eyes and, yeah. and get over it. I, I mean, Danny, you, you agree as well. I do. I mean, like you have... Yeah, if you sit down with some, like I've sat. Yeah, I mean, look, I've definitely. Right, you and me, for example. I never hated you. No, but, well, no, we're not talking about hate, but just oh, well, in terms different. of me be, leaving my ignorance and learning yeah, so well, much. Yeah, well, you're a, an open person. Well, what were you gonna say? Like, no, I mean, just like if you are, if you sit down with somebody that you that you don't get along with and you hate, like if you're obviously you can probably get around it. Right. Like, look at me and Julius. True. Uh, like, he said some awful, awful shit about me, and then, like, now... Julius is a, is a promoter that works at the club, at uh, Broadway Comedy Club, and uh, in the past, he says some real foul stuff about Dana, but now it looks like they are friends, because he finally met you, and yeah. not, I wouldn't say friends, but y- y'all, it I looks mean, like you're forging a relationship. Like, yeah, I mean, you know. I really think that's all it I'm just, not a bad, like, I, I I will give someone a chance, and if they apologize and they explain it, it's me or whatever, and if they're willing to learn and, and stuff, then then I'm fine. I don't, I wouldn't you, hold hate for anybody. Did you see the Heineken commercial uh, where the, uh, they brought people from different backgrounds to do, like, a little project, and then after they yes. do the project, decide if they want to do it? Yeah. Did you see how powerful yeah, that was? Yeah, yeah. That was super powerful. Oh my! So, so the dude, it, it was a dude on there. He was like, I don't like trans people. I, you know, I, I'm not. That's not my background. I don't respect that. All of this stuff. Fine. So he gets with a woman and they're doing this project. Then they show their backstories and it finds, come to find out she's trans. Yeah. So it was like it so was now, really so crazy. Heineken had this thing. So they had the beer and so they now was decide. Do you want to stick? And have the beer with the person, or do you want to leave? And they all wind up saying, and then they learn stuff about. But the he other walked person. away initially, and then he said, "Just kidding." Yeah, that was that. funny. That was nice. <laughs> it was funny. And the look on that the, the the other person's face was I'm like, "Damn, oh, <laughs> we just built this thing, and now you're going to leave?" You know, because I'm trying. Man, what that was such a powerful message, though. It was super powerful. Such a powerful message. Uh, listen, man, I'm loving y'all. I love the energy. Keep it up. You well, know? Thank you, JC. Yeah, I mean, not that you need my approval, but I think, <laughs> I think my approval is important to me. You know, and I and I'm I am protective of Dean. I have to say, I really am. I'm protective of her. Um, I love her very much, and I'm glad that she found a good dude like you, man. I really am. I'm glad. Yeah, it looks y'all y'all just make me <laughs> sick with the love. I'm telling you, I'm sick with it. Um, no, it's great. It's really great that you found it. Anything that uh, that that you want to offer about about Dina that uh, 
that you think, I don't know, people either should hear or your feelings that you want to <laughs> Maybe he wants to get down on one knee. And, uh, <laughs> JC, <laughs> we just moved in together. Calm down. That's right. Y'all yeah. did just move. Congratulations on that. Yeah. Uh, any parting thoughts that you have just on the, on the whole situation? No, Dana's wonderful. Uh, fuck gender. Yeah, man. Yeah. Fuck it. And then you fall in love with, you know, a person. All that other stuff is, is secondary. Well, that's great, man. Uh, you're not a performer, so I'm not going to have you plug anything. But, Dina, we can go ahead and plug some stuff. Where can people find you if they want to follow you, People boo? can find me on Facebook, Dina Marie Martin, on uh, Instagram, at Fabulous Dina Marie, on Snapchat, Fabulous Lady D. And, yeah. Is that it? Okay. You. Uh, you guys, y'all can find me, JC Best. Just Google me. I'm everywhere. Facebook. Twitter, Instagram, JC Best. Uh, in terms of the show, again, I cannot state this enough. Hold it still. You're flashing Hold it around. They can't read shit. And get them. Caroline's, June 21st, 7:30. New York City, 7:30 p.m. is going to be a huge event, a big blowout. Proceeds go to the Alley Forney Center. Very special. If you want to follow us, you follow can follow us, us on Facebook, uh, Trans Talk with JC Best and Dina Marie. On Instagram, Snapchat, and Twitter at Trans, Trans Talk, Talk Radio. And Radio. if you want to email us with any questions, you can do so. It's transtalkradio at gmail.com. Woo! Awesome, guys. Once again, Thank we you. are here every single week at Live On Air, 335 Flatbush Avenue in Brooklyn. They hold it down with the baddest cuisine and drinks, <laughs> and I'm just excited. Uh, this has been another fantastic episode of Trans Talk. We will see you yeah. next week. Woo! Trans Talk.